there are many different opinions about hunting and about its legitimacy in a modern society where most of us live lives where what we eat and where what we eat comes from are extremely removed from each other. You're just taking it on yourself to find the animal that you want to put in your freezer and your family to feed on as opposed to paying somebody in a butcher shop and a slaughterhouse and work his way back to the rancher that raises the beef to do this all for you. The classical way to address this question is that you get to a person who believes in hunting, who has trophies, and you go to a vegan vegetarian who says, I will never eat anything alive and not something that comes from anything alive. And then those two come together and fight. And people hunt and love hunting. People think that hunters are your cruel uh, torturers of innocent animals, and you have a very wide range of opinions. We're not any better or any worse than the people who don't hunt. If one is going to choose to eat meat, it seems as though that assumes that one is taking, at least implicitly, responsibility for killing the thing that one eats. I'm just taking the middleman out of the picture. And if one is willing to take responsibility for killing the thing that one eats, I think that one would have to be willing to concede that hunting is a perfectly okay thing to do. Animals are lower down the food chain than we are. That's just the way it is. So because as far as we are aware, animals are not autonomous, I don't think we have moral obligations towards them. All animals, even game animals, should be treated respectfully, not abused. So my personal choice would be to have an environment in which hunting would not be necessary. However, I think as it stands, some form of regulation of population growth for deer herds is necessary. However, I do think that it is of crucial importance that the least amount of pain is inflicted. I think we have to be very careful about distinguishing between moral obligations and other forms of obligations. So I think we can have obligations that are not moral obligations. If it doesn't get taken by a hunter in a fast, humane way, then it eventually will die of either disease, starvation, or predators that are much, much more cruel than human hunters. Have you seen mass starvation of deer? That's maybe the most painful form of non-hunting. Deer in winter where there is no food, no forage, which come downtown, are chased away by property owners who love their plants better than Bambi. Mass starvation, have you ever tried to not eat for a week? That's what we do to those deer. The survival of the fittest, yes. But don't we all love Bambi because Bambi is not the fittest? We let nature take its course, we say. It's maybe the most cruel thing. Because I think that part of our way of viewing who we are and our ways of imagining what the best life for ourselves would be involve considerations about how much pain and suffering that we cause. As human beings and as ethical hunters, we do care. We expect ourselves 
to take this animal down as quickly and as humanely as possible. The point is that the argument is really about reduction of deer population and reduction of pain. And non-hunters and hunters can both agree on reduction of pain, and it doesn't matter whether they regard animals as equals or animals as inferiors or even animals as superior to themselves.